I am here with two of the breakout stars of Netflix's hit docuseries, Cheer, Jerry Harris and Ladarius Marshall. Yes! <laughs> yeah. We are so excited to have you here today. How are you? We're doing good. good. Thank, Thank you. you. Living. Thank you. Like, you guys have just become these viral celebrities. The internet has seriously fallen in love with both of you for so many reasons. What does that feel like, Ladarius? It feels good. I think it just is like... I feel like the validation that we get from what we're doing is just like so like empowering to us. So it's like, okay, yeah, like we're doing something right for somebody. And like those people have enough voice to talk to us as well. So it feels really good. Jerry? Yes, I feel the same way. Like we're giving off um, so much. We're getting so much love and positivity mm -hmm. and we're having people that share like similar stories that they have and it's just opening the doors. Um, this show is opening the doors for them to share something they probably didn't think they wanted to share, but they're sharing it with us, and we're happy that we relate on such a different level, and we're happy that they have enough confidence to even share that with us. The show seems to be such a like his, uh, revolutionary uh, representation for black queerness with both of you and like the stories that you represent and like who you are as people. What does it feel like to be uh, portraying that in the media right now, and how have people responded to that uh, portrayal? I feel like a lot of people have responded positively towards it. Um, I haven't seen any like hate comments or anything rude like that. I feel like because our um, generation is changing and our world is changing, everybody's so open to accepting um, um, gay men like us. So we're happy with that. <laughs> I know that we get like a rap in like the black um, community about being like black men that are gay. And I feel like there have been a better shift of them supporting us, and I'm very thankful for that. And it feels good to be able to be ourselves and not have to be ridiculed, even though there's some people that are gonna ridicule us, but not having to see that as much compared to the positivity that is given. Mm -hmm. So you're talking about homophobia in the black community, but there's also a lot of racism in the LGBTQ community, right? Mm -hmm. What have been your experiences with that? Um, I've never had that experience. My boyfriend is white, so <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're good. Period. <laughs> so what What is it like to be like in an interracial relationship? Oh, I love it. I love him. It's just fun. Like my dad, my dad, my true dad. He's white, and that means like I'm so like used to being around different lot, a lot of different people. You guys feel like kind of awkward at first because you're like, okay, we're like different in like the appearance look, but like when you're like so used to each other, it just feels so like natural and so easy. You don't even think about it. Jerry, uh, the show profiles your experience with um, like losing your mom. Mm -hmm. And what were the tools or the resources that you called on to get through that experience? Definitely my cheer family. Um, they helped me out through a lot growing up. Like cheer is my outlook um, to, to life. And I use that as my safe place to get away from all of my other problems that I have going on. So cheer is something that I had that was for me and I loved it and it took me away from all my outside problems. So when that um, situation happened, um, I had my um, old cheer gym help me out and reach out and they just uplifted me and made me feel better and just made me feel like I had support and I wasn't alone. It kind of reminds me of the like RuPaul saying where she says like as gay people we get to choose our family. Um, sort of like the opportunity that we as gay people or LGBTQ people have to have like a chosen family. Who is like your chosen family with Darius? Uh, Jordan. I would say um, he has always, he stepped up in my life as a father figure. And he's only like eight years older than me, but I look at him as he's my dad. And I really truly feel like I am a part of the family because um, we just are all that close. Like his mom, I call her grandmother, and obviously his dad, grandpa. Like I just feel like I am so close to them. And I have a lot of chair families, but those are the one, that is the one family that I actually feel like we are like blood related because of how close we are. And what about your the family that you live with? What um, there. Um, <laughs> well, I have to. I like to say I like have cheer moms, and the um, the mom that I live with, her name is Shannon, and um, she has a husband, um, two kids, and I love I love them so much, and I live with them, and they've been so nurturing ever since I moved in with them, and they've just been so helpful, and just great people to be around, and great a great family to be around too. On Twitter, one of the questions that I saw people have is like, who is Jerry's Jerry? Okay, um, my Jerry um, is definitely my mother that passed away. Um, she taught me to always be positive and always look out for people and always do the right thing. And that's something I try to emulate in her to make her proud each and every day. So my, my Jerry's Jerry is my mom. Okay. 
And who's and who is Jerry? Your Jerry? Yes. <laughs> what does Jerry mean to you? <laughs> Jerry, Jerry is just oh, that's like that's like my family. Like Jerry is like your name is just like bigger than what you think it is. Like it is more than just oh your name is Jerry. It's like you're so empowering. Like you lift people who don't have the power to lift themselves sometimes. And sometimes I don't ever tell you enough, but you are like a role model in my life. And I love you so much. I, really I love do. you too. Oh my God. That is like getting me. <laughs> One of the things that was kind of like hard to watch in some ways was if uh, there were moments in the show when it felt that like, like, you know, that saying hurt people hurt. And I felt like there were some moments in the show when there were things that you would do and I would, and there were like negative reactions or repercussions or things and I would it would pain me because I would feel so bad for you in those moments. What did it feel like for you to watch back those moments kind of? I was just I was very disappointed in myself. I'm not even gonna um like be around the bush. I was disappointed because I was like I know what you're going through because I'm like talking to myself because I do talk to myself a lot. I was like, I know what you're going through, but those people don't deserve to go through that because you're just feeling some type of way or you're hurting. You have to learn to be the bigger person. What are you? You're, you got one or two situations. You're either gonna sit there and you're gonna wallow in everything you've been through and cry about it and make everybody feel pity for it, or you're gonna step up to the challenge and you're gonna handle your business and you're gonna be the better person that you always wanted to be. So when I was watching this. Um, the documentary back, I was like, very like, okay, this is what everybody is seeing. And this is not how I want to be. So like towards the end, when it was like much better, I was like, I felt better because I was growing. And I didn't realize it then, but I was growing. And it helped me even better, more grow and improve on myself when I watched it all with my family. Because I was like, mm, you're a little snarky little Irish. You're a little very quick with the attitude. So I just wanted to be better in that category in my life. So I'm, gonna, I'm working on it a lot. But that's kind of like an amazing opportunity to have, to like to have somebody be able to film you and you be able to watch it back. I feel like we all, like I probably need that myself. <laughs> um, what did, what was you, what was your experience watching those things? Um, well, I, we roomed together, so it wasn't anything surprising to me. Right. Um, I would just try to be there for him if he ever needed it, and if things started to get too much, just talk to him like I did in the series, and that, that's why I told him to call Ali on the phone. Ciao. <laughs> Just try to make him feel better and just let him know that he can always do the right thing and that he's never alone. God, it's you. You guys are so <laughs> sweet. <laughs> um, you know, I just, like, your stories, like, move me, like, so much. Like, to see what both of you have been through and that you can still, like, show up to life with so much like drive and ambition and positivity is like so inspirational and I know it just means like so much to so many people you know and I feel so grateful that you exist and that you know the world has the opportunity to see you um sorry oh, thank you so much but um ooh, let's go back to some questions um <laughs> what would you say to children out there that may be you know, growing up in similar circumstances, maybe they're gay and they're black and they're poor. What would you say to them? Um, say, have goals. Have goals that you want and have dreams. Um, never give up on them. Never forget them. Always push. Always strive to be better. And you'll eventually get there. Just breathe and just take your time. And things happen. everything happens, everything happens for a reason. The Darius? I would say look in the mirror. Look at yourself. Look at yourself five years from now. Look at yourself a year from now. Can you see yourself in the same situation? If you had children, would you want them in the same situation? What are you gonna do better and what are you gonna do different that's gonna change the outcome of how you're living right now? If you want better, you're gonna have to go out and do better to get better. And that is what my thing, my like my revelation for them is. That because you were born in a certain situation does not mean you have to live that certain situation your whole life. This ain't no monarchy where you got the kings and queens and you just gonna always be a peasant like you gonna you can work your way up but it's about how bad you want it what would you say to your 13 year old self Ooh. <laughs> don't give up <laughs> don't give up keep pushing you can do it i would tell myself <laughs> i would say you need to stop being ghetto <laughs> <laughs> you need to watch your mouth <laughs> you gotta stop jumping over tables and throwing oh, stuff at teachers <laughs> And I would say, yeah. have more fun. Like, truly have more fun. 
And don't be so hard on yourself. But now, like, what next? Like, you guys, like, what is next for you? Like, what do you do with all of this? Like, this, this moment? Like, what's next? What do you want? Well, with, with this being out, it's opened a lot of doors and doors for us and so many more opportunities. But um, I think for both of us, we want to get our associate's degree in mm -hmm. May and probably eventually get a, um, a degree from university. But we're just trying to see as many opportunities as we can and see where life takes us. Can we get you a talk show? If you, I would love yes, to. Girl, absolutely. Absolutely. Like Jerry, like Jerry and the Darius. Yes. I'll live for it. Yeah, we can probably give you your own hour of today. All okay. right. They're just okay. handing them out at this point. Okay, right. we can do this. Let's do um, it. And let's end with, before we do rapid fire, let's end with what have you learned most about yourself through this experience of being on Cheer? Oof. I've learned that, um, I've learned that I can actually touch people's lives more than I thought I could. That's what I've learned. Learned that I'm more vulnerable than I thought I was and that I don't have to be so hard and so cut off from the world and have my walls up so thick that nobody can get through. I learned that I can have feelings and not feel weak. Do you feel like it's specific, it's, it's, it's extremely hard to, to, to be weak? Like, do you think that there, like, there's a stigma associated with, especially men, like you have to be strong and you know, like that's why you potentially had those walls built and, and where did that come from? Um, like even on the show, my brother, he was telling me how he would like try to rough us up and try to make us tough. And it's like, you see that a lot in the black, like the, the black community, like the men, they try so hard to like toughen up their sons, but it's like, it makes us like, shut off like it make like we don't have emotions we're not supposed to have emotions because emotions make us weak we're supposed to be this alpha like they try to build us up as we're like supposed to be something that like a figure that everybody respects but you have no emotion for any like you have no emotion whether you have a wife a child or anything it's like okay it's like and it's hard because you try so hard to be like so if something happens to me what am i supposed to do just they say take it like a man and be like just move on and it's like sometimes people can't take it like a man and move on because then they end up in jail because they didn't took it like a man and then got mad and then did something that they weren't supposed to do. And it's like, it's really, really hard growing up as a male listening to, oh, you need to be more manly. I'm like, what is more manly? Not, not having emotions, not talking to people, not telling people what you think in your man because you're going crazy and you don't know what is going to happen to yourself because you're literally everywhere and you're floating in free space. And that is the biggest thing that I have an issue with, with being like, especially a black male, because it is so evident in the, the black community, even from, it comes from women as well. They want you to be something that you're not. They want you to be this hard case man. And it's just not, that's just not reality. It's not because they say you're like, they say it's something about emasculated men or something like that. And it's like, no, it's not like we are, Still men, we're guys. We're born guys, it's, we are what we are, it doesn't matter. And if you don't like us for who we are, that's on you, boo. You handle that on your own time. But do not bring that in our world. People seem to be like especially moved by the moment when your brother uh, cries watching you win. What was that like to, uh, to rewatch to re that yourself? Um, back to the no emotion part, he did not, he does not really show emotion. Antonio does not show emotion. So seeing that, like I haven't seen him cry in about 11, 11 years. So it's been a long time. And to see that I cried myself because it's like, I've been working so hard and I've been pushing so hard. And I used to always go to their games or basketball, football, baseball, no matter what it was. And I always cheered them on. And it was like, they finally have seen me. They have sat down and watched me do what I love and perform my heart away, just like they performed their little hearts away for the sports that they played. And it really made me feel a lot better between our relationship because we never really spoke to each other because of like our differences and stuff. But yeah, we actually have a conversation now with each other after the show because of it. Amazing. Okay. All right, so now we're gonna do a rapid fire question round with Ladarius and Jerry. Two minutes and 15 seconds are on the clock because two minutes and 15 seconds is the time of the routine for nationals. All right, here we go, ready and start. Uh, favorite celebrity that you have heard has binged the series? DJ Watt. Reese Witherspoon. Uh, if you could mat talk anyone, who would it be? Gabrielle Union. 
Um, I would Matt Todd. <laughs> uh, who was your role model growing up? My mother. Steve Irwin. Favorite drag queen? RuPaul. <laughs> RuPaul. <laughs> okay. Favorite pop diva? Mm. Pass. Katy Perry. <laughs> Favorite moment from Cheer? <laughs> um, <laughs> running into the ocean. <laughs> um, when I said, first off, I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> Least favorite moment from Cheer? Oof. See my part on oh, Cheer. <laughs> uh, me cussing out Will. <laughs> Dream job? Um, cheer coach. Actor. Order at Starbucks? Caramel latte. Caramel frappuccino. Song you can't stop listening to right now? Um, can't keep my hands to myself by Selena Gomez. Um, lose you to love me by Selena Gomez. Oh, that's some Selena Gomez, man. Okay. okay. Uh, show you're currently binging yourself. Cheer. Oh, <laughs> period. <Plug. laughs> How to get away with murder. <laughs> okay. Um, favorite season of Bad Girls Club? Ooh, Nine. season seven. Season <laughs> Nine. seven. <laughs> favorite Bad Girl? Megan James. Judy. <laughs> favorite housewife? I don't watch Housewives. Nene Lee. Family G. Uh, Twitter or Instagram? Instagram. Twitter. Single or taken? Single. Taken. Huh? Uh, favorite song to perform in the mirror? Ooh. I would say Win Again by Nicki Minaj. Okay. Ooh. Did it, did it on him. <laughs> Nicki Minaj. Spirit, Spirit. Spirit animal. Monica. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, animal. like an actual animal? Yeah, yeah. I thought it was a person. No, like an actual animal. We say Monica. I'm going to say Kangaroo. Monica. And Kangaroo. I said um, and do your best impression of the other person. <laughs> First off, I'm tired. <laughs> Let's go, you guys! Get around! Let's go! Go, 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 go! I'm like the, 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 the. Thank you so much. That was good. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you.